<laughs> so, um, in this example, so we have the train. You, you can't do the same thing. You got to change it up. That's a part of teacher too. You got to change things up. Okay. Um, transverse axis endpoints: two comma three, two comma negative one. Conjugate axis length is six. So the main important thing that I want to drill down with you. Aaron, do you know what I keep on asking to do? The first step for all of these problems what is to like? <laughs> plot the points. In this point, we have two endpoints. So I'm going to <laughs> plot the information. And not only am I going to plot the information, I'm going to label the information. And if that's all I can do on my quiz, then fine. That's good. That, you know, that's some partial credit. That's something. You but you guys are plotting points. This is not anything that's that difficult. So you have two comma three, one, two, three, or two, come up three, one, two, three, and two, negative one. So those are my two, the transverse axis endpoints. Based on the notes from this class, you should know that the endpoints of the transverse axis represent the vertices. You should also know from the notes um, from, last, from this topic that the vertices lie on the transverse axis. So I'm going to draw that in. So I know my transverse axis is vertical. So now that I know it vertical, do I already know what formula I'm going to be using? Yeah, the one that I did in that last equation. So it's going to be y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared equals 1. It's always a squared minus b squared. But remember, when the y is over the a, it's a vertical transverse axis. OK? So um, we need to figure out what h and k is, which is the center. Well, again, from our notes, when you guys look at the diagram, the center is always in the middle of your two vertices. The center is always in the middle of your two foci. The center is always in the middle of your two covertices. Right? Because the distance is equal going left and right or up or down. Yeah. So I don't have the center, but I have two vertices. So if, can I find the middle between these two vertices? Yeah, why not? Yeah, just find the midpoint. All right? So you could do mathematically, you can find the midpoint. Or since I graphed it, it's very easy for me to visualize and say, all right, the distance is 1, 2, 3, 4. I can just calculate that my center here is right there at 2, comma 1. Oh. So I'm going to label that. H, and I'm going to label that K. Now, the only thing left I need to do is I need to figure out what is A and what is B. So I need to go back and remember, what does A, B, and C represent? A represents the distance from the center to the vertices. B represents the distance from the center to the covertices. And C represents the um, distance from the center to your foci. It's the same for hyperbolas as it is for an ellipse. So we've got to practice that and everything. So, I only have a vertice graph right now. So do I know the distance from the center to my vertice? A is equal to 2. So therefore, a squared is equal to 4. Now, the only left thing that they're saying is the conjugate axis has a length of 6. Remember that the conjugate axis is the axis that my um, covertices lie on. And it's also perpendicular to it's also perpendicular to my transverse axis. Now remember, guys, for instance, if the distance from the center to my vertice is a, I'm going a up and I'm going a down. So my endpoints is actually 2a. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes? So the length of my transverse axis is 2a. So what do you think would be the length of my conjugate axis? It would be 2b. So therefore, I can say that. 2b equals 6. Can I now solve for what b would be? b equals 3, and therefore b squared equals 9. So now I have obtained a, I have obtained 9, and I have attained h and k. And now I just got to plug them into my equation, and I'm done. OK, the length of your conjugate axis is 6. From one covertice to the other covertice is 6. The center is in between. So the distance from the center to one covertice is half the length. Make sense? So y minus 2 squared over 4 minus x minus 1. Uh, I'm sorry. x minus 2.
Done. Anybody have any questions? That was good, Lee. Everybody good?